Football is known as the beautiful game, but it's not always played in beautiful conditions. That's why in March of 2016, Nike introduced to the world their anti-clog traction. A technology designed to prevent mud sticking to the bottom of your boots to prevent you from slipping and losing your footing and slowing you down while playing football. In this video, I use my degree as well as some household appliances to try and recreate anti-clog technology. Hello and welcome to Substance Football, my name is Sub and in this video I'll be talking you through an experiment I did over the last few weeks on how I tried to recreate Nike's anti clock traction. So it's kind of like a scientific experiment, I say scientific in quotation because it's, it's not scientific but I kind of structured the video that way to make it seem like it's more scientific so it kind of gives it a bit more authenticity about, you know, but really and truly it's just like a little fun thing I did. So I'm going to divide the video in how you'd likely maybe read a scientific paper. So I'm going to start off with a bit of background method, results, and then end with like the discussion, conclusion, summary kind of thing. Starting off with some background around the anti-clock technology, I'm going to read a few quotes that come directly from Nike's website. Nike anti-clock traction prevents mud from clogging the sole plate of Nike's football boots. The technology was developed over the course of two years with insights from Nike's design materials and research teams. Dr. Jeremy Walker was one of the several PhDs working on this project. With backgrounds in material science, engineering and chemistry, there is a reason why this problem persisted for so many generations of players, says Walker. It is extremely difficult to solve, but that's the kind of challenge we thrive on. Nike anti-clock traction sole plates include an adaptive polymer that becomes compliant when exposed to water. Walker and his team initially pursued a variety of mechanical and water repellent solutions but concluded none of these were viable for a lifetime of the boots. Their next approach seemed counterintuitive but ultimately proved effective. We stopped thinking about repelling water and started thinking about using it to our advantage to create a lubricous layer. Without sacrificing traction, Walker continues, understanding the molecular structure of mud was key to developing a hydrophilic solution which helps keep mud from clogging the plate. What? Now for a lot of you, that probably sounded like a different language. I don't have a PhD, but I do have a master's in material science and engineering. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. So I'm going to explain what those quotes basically mean in layman's terms. So just to dumb it down a bit, what Nike basically have done is they've created an outsole made from a polymer which activates when it comes into water, which prevents water sticking to the bottom of your football boots. Now in the past, I've been quite skeptical of anti-clock traction. I thought it used to be quite gimmicky because when you really put your mind to it, these footballers that play at the top level, they play on pitches which are pretty much carpet. They hardly get mud on their boots. Like even in the coldest, wettest winters, you see them wearing a lot of the time firm ground boots, even with no mud on them at the, at the end of games. So, but like if you're playing at the lower leagues, you're playing at grassroots level where the pitches are a bit more like swamps. See, I can see why this is a bit more useful to you, but at the same time, even then, like it's not that often you're going to play in a pitch where the mud is so bad that it's going to stop you from playing football. I mean, like, the referee might as well call off the game, but, like, like I said, it, it's a technology that actually works, I could say, but, like, to the point where of how advantageous it is, um, I don't know. And just to add on to that last point, even at the top level of the pros, they don't themselves seem to be fans of anti-clock traction. I don't know why that is. Maybe because it makes boots a bit heavier than they usually would be without it. You see the likes of um, Lewandowski when he was wearing the Phantom Venoms, he preferred them with a, when it was SG anyway, he preferred the SG of a the custom Hyper Venom 3 fan soul plate as to using the anti clock Now creating a method for this one was quite tricky as I do not have access to Nike's adaptive polymer and I don't have access to a material science lab anymore anyway. So what I tried to do is I tried to do what they kind of did in the early steps is where they tried to use a water repellent solution which won't last long but at least let me see the effects of trying to use maybe a solution that i can just reapply every now and again so what i did is i got something which you know has much like water repellent um properties and that would be well some a lot of people you have them in your homes you won't probably realize what it is and that is trainer protector which i would not be naming because they are not paying me so another reason why i'm having to use this rather than actually getting access to something that is more closer to the um adaptive polymer that nike have been using is that really and truly i can only use on four boots i have i don't have any anti-clog boots myself and it's a different material that they use so regularly most of the boots the sole play or the outsole whatever you want to call it is made from a plastic known as tpu which stands for thermoplastic urethane so, you know, I'm going to have to work with that. And because of that, it's also 
waterproof anyway so i'm gonna have to find something that i can just apply to the bottom of the house so so for the acu test it was actually very simple what i did i got up here my eyelash x's and i sprayed the right foot with the um trainer protector and let it dry overnight the reason why i only sprayed one foot is so i can actually see a clear comparison between um, the same pair of boots and to see if there's any difference with me actually spraying them with the trainer protector now it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for the results drum roll please So the picture you see on screen is the one I took straight after the game I played on Saturday and for those who are wondering or if you're not wondering I'm going to tell you anyway we won 7-1 and I usually play as a centre back. But enough about me, back to the results. So yeah, on screen are, is a picture I took of the boots I played in last Saturday so the picture is obviously inverted so you've got the right foot on the left hand side and the left foot on the right hand side in this case. So if you look closely you can pretty much already tell that the trainer protector did next to nothing really maybe if you look closely enough you can see the boot that i did spray so the right foot there's a little bit less mud just a little bit less mud than on the left foot but maybe it's just me looking for something to be right about now am i surprised that this experiment didn't work uh, nah. let's be honest nike needed two years to create this using several phds in material science and chemistry me i have four years of experience no phd and an Amazon Prime account. Really and truly, I was never going to be able to replicate the technology and the effort that they've put in in just you know in a week's time in my bedroom. But there are several reasons as to why it didn't work. Not just the fact that I lacked the um, you know kind of material knowledge in this kind of sense or the experience, but it's just the fundamentals of the different materials that were used in this experiment anyway. So like I mentioned before, the anti-clog uses a special polymer and the four wheels I used are made from, you know, the typical um, TPU material. Now, just because I use this training protector doesn't mean necessarily that it won't work with others, maybe. I feel like, you know, it's just a, it was just a cheap one I found on Amazon for maybe like maybe two ninety nine or something like that. Maybe if I use something which is more expensive, something more industrial strength, that has much higher water resi um, resistance or water repellent, if that's like even a word. Yeah, maybe it would work even better, but hey, maybe that's another time for another video. If you enjoyed me wasting your time with this video and you're interested in maybe more kind of football-based science experiments, I plan to do a lot more on this channel, please leak, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Like I always say, if you thought the video was sublime, like the video. If you thought it was still like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure to follow me on all my socials. Once again, my name is Sabah. This has been Substance Football. Thanks for watching. Peace out.